I remember once when I had met Jim, we were reading the Sunday New York Times, and there was an article that said something to the effect of black boy rescues white boy from drowning. And uh, it struck me, and I guess I said this to Jim, wouldn't it be great if they could just have that headline be, one boy saves his friend from drowning, and forget the race part. Home was founded in 1963, originally under a different name, Niagara Frontier Council for Freedom of Choice in Housing. It began in the Friends Meeting House, started by clergy members and a few citizens that realized the need for change, the need for the end of segregation and discrimination in Buffalo housing. I remember my dad calling realtors and asking for appointments to see homes. And he would say that every time they heard his voice as being a black man, uh, he was told that the house was sold or whatever was taking place. But then you ride past the house, a couple of weeks later, the sign for sale was still on the house. And he said, you know, this is doing, this is really discrimination. He says, he's doing it because we're black. If there's discrimination, they're not as blatant with it now as they was then, because then they had this uh, gentleman's agreement where the white realtors wouldn't come into the city and the black realtors wouldn't go out of the city. It goes back to the, for, uh, the integration of the city um, really around the time of World War II when, when blacks were allowed only to live in Ellicott. And then we had a somewhat uneven and chaotic integration of the Maston neighborhood. And our history with that in the city of Buffalo hasn't been a very positive one. People were not welcoming to uh, people of different races living in communities. We were, we were a very ethnic city, and, um, and people took great pride in that, and they felt that's the way it should be. Home was not so content to just let it be. They decided that in order for Buffalo to prove that it truly was indeed the city of good neighbors, something needed to be done. They conducted a series of petitions as well as phone surveys in both Buffalo and the outlying regions and to their surprise, they found support for integration. It turns out that communities around Buffalo did not object to ethnically diverse families moving into the neighborhood. It was clear that a change had to occur. There needed to be a law, but that law would not come until 1968 with the passage of the Federal Fair Housing Act, which included protections for race, color, national origin, sex, and religion. Throughout the 1970s and 80s, home had continued to evolve and change. Until 1974, it had been an all-volunteer organization, but they were eventually able to hire a small professional staff. At this time, and throughout the 1980s, home was located at 1490 Jefferson Avenue. In uh, 1986, uh, we began an investigation of Buffalo's largest landlord, uh, uh, the uh, Buffalo Municipal Housing Authority, uh, which uh, uh, controlled 7,100 units of government-assisted housing uh, in 27 developments. Uh, nine of those developments were 90% or more uh, African-American and Hispanic. Nine others were 92% or more white. Uh, some public housing developments in the city of Buffalo in the late 1980s had never had a single tenant of color. Uh, uh, this was not by accident. While the fair housing laws continued to slowly be passed, certain members of society remained unprotected classes. The man who's now my husband and I were ready to buy a house, and uh, we were given a, a little bit of a runaround. And I came to realize, I mean, the, the things that we were being asked to do and some hoops we were asked to jump through were really sort of like a steering kind of thing. Or, you know, we don't uh, give a big home loan to your type. While New York State was a trailblazer in enacting anti-discrimination laws, sexual orientation was finally added to the protected classes in 2003. In addition, Buffalo approved its first fair housing ordinance in 2006. Surrounding areas West Seneca and Hamburg each passed similar ordinances, making it much harder to discriminate. During these years of actively seeking justice, Home continued its physical move. In 1989, Home moved to 700 Main Street, where the organization resided until 2012. 
On February 23, 2012, Homewood moved to its current location at 1542 Main Street. The architecturally significant building was previously abandoned, but was rehabilitated to become the gateway to the Linwood Oxford neighborhood, as well as connecting the west and east sides of Buffalo. With the dedication of the redesigned building came the introduction of the Oxford Commons Apartments. It's home's first ever permanent home, but not only that, we are now landlords, which is something that, you know, we profess to be experts on, so then why not be, um, be landlords ourselves? And so it's a beautiful location, it's a wonderful building, the heat will always work, um, and I've just been really, really fortunate to be a part of the whole process from start to finish. We're still dealing with an issue of being a highly segregated city. Uh, I think for us to um, compete uh, with other cities across the state and country, uh, we have to be better about embracing values, uh, their values of strengthening neighborhoods through diversity. Um, it's a human rights issue that uh, we have to continue to address. Uh, there's still abuses out there, and we definitely need an organization like HOME with a proven track record you know, to be the watchdog in our community. As HOME physically evolved, so have its programs. HOME provides various outreach opportunities to places, including soup kitchens, community organizations, and colleges and universities. They also go into outlying communities surrounding the Buffalo area, such as the town of Hamburg, who's made great strides in creating stronger, more diverse communities into their own town by providing services such as landlord training and fair housing counseling. I am the senior counselor. Uh, I take the bulk um, cause of intakes, just a regular tenant landlord cause, um, whether tenants having problems or the landlords are having problems and also open discrimination cases in housing as well. In addition to fair housing services, HOME also has the Greater Buffalo Community Housing Center, which assists clients to move to areas of greater opportunity. It's very easy for people to stay in one neighborhood, and if you don't get exposure to other people, and the only time of exposure you get to different people is by watching the news or media portrayal, you're going to come up with these stereotypes, you're going to come up with these perceived notions. So if someone who fits those notions, or someone that you think fits those notions, comes in, you're definitely going to think, okay, you know, this person is this or this person is that. And if you're not exposed consistently, you're never going to learn different. And if you don't, if you're never introduced to other people or you're not educated and, and, you, and you don't seek out education, especially if you have no opportunity to get it, you're not going to change. And, and basically what it's going to do is just pass down from generation to generation. One is, is denied housing, you, you not only uh, lose the opportunity for the housing of your choice and 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 usually uh, suffer some uh, emotional scars as a result uh, of the discrimination. Uh, but you're also denied uh, equal opportunity to education and employment, cultural and recreational opportunities, to medical care and public services. You are essentially denied an equal opportunity in life. So why is home still important today? I think home by its presence uh, is standing for a principle that would be easy to forget by people who would like to forget it. Uh, I, I, I just think I would turn the question around. What would Buffalo be like if home were not here? If there was no organization supported by all elements in the community, including those who are not themselves discriminated against, that stood for the uh, full entitlement of uh, minority communities, uh, what kind of a community, what kind of a city would we have? We're continuing the fight. Um, as long as we have people um, from uh, when home first started, Jim Heck, Pauline Clay, Jim Crawford, um, we're continuing, and that's what our whole uh, venue for the anniversary gala is. We're building on the legacy that they left us. And I feel that we're continually building those blocks. And I don't know if discrimination would ever be completely banished, but we can continue the fight. We will continue building on the legacy. So even though we face the difficulties of today and tomorrow, 
I still have a dream. Yes. It is a dream deeply rooted in the American dream. Yes. I have a dream mm -hmm. that one day yes. this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. Yeah.